thinking, what they say and do and approve or disapprove of, and sometimes what they leave unsaid. And the prospect of your disapproval is a great silencer of most men's tongues, and some things are never said for fear of the consequences, but I can sometimes hear what people whisper behind their hands, and everywhere... I hear sympathy expressed for this unfortunate girl, condemned as she is to a horrifying death which no woman has ever suffered before, and unjustly in most people's eyes. In burying her brother, who was killed in action, she did something that most people consider decent and honorable, rather than leaving him naked on the battlefield for the dogs to tear at and kites and scavengers to pick to the bone. She should be given a medal for it, those same people say, and her name inscribed on the roll of honor. These things are whispered in secret, Father, and they've reached my ears. Sir, your reputation matters to me as much as your good health and happiness does. Indeed, your good name matters more. What could a loving son be more jealous of than his father's reputation? And what could please a father more than to see his son's concern that people will think well of him? Then let me beg you to have second thoughts and not be certain that your own opinion is the only right one and that all men share it. The man who thinks he has the monopoly of wisdom and that only what he says and what he thinks is of any relevance reveals his own shallowness of mind with every word he says. The man of judgment knows it's a sign of strength, not weakness, to value others' opinions and to learn from them, and when he's wrong, to admit it openly and change his mind. You see it when a river floods. The trees that bend survive. Those whose trunks are inflexible are snapped off short by the weight of water. And a sailor in a storm who refuses to reef his sail and run with the wind is likely to end up capsized. I beg you, Father, think twice about this. Don't let your anger influence you. If a man of my age may lay some small claim to common sense, let me say this. Absolute certainty is fine. If a man can be certain that his wisdom is absolute. But such certainty and such wisdom is rare among men. And that being so, the next best is to learn to listen and to take good advice when it's offered. There's a lot of sense, my Lord Crown, in what this young man has said, as indeed there was in everything that you said, too. The fact is, you are both in the right, and there's a good deal to be said for either. Is there indeed? Am I expected to listen and take lessons in political tactics? at my age from a mere boy. I'm a man, father, and my arguments stand upon their merits, not my age. I am for common justice, no more than that. Oh, they stand upon their merits, do they? Well, what merit is there, please tell me, in breaking the law? I wouldn't defend her if she'd broken the law. But she has broken it openly, fragrantly. Listen to the people in the streets, father. The ordinary Thebans, they say she has... I have never based my political principles on the opinions of people in the street. Now you're the one who's speaking like a boy. I am speaking like a king. It is my decision. I will act according to my own conviction. When the state becomes one man, it ceases to be a state. The state is the statesman who rules it. It reflects his judgment. It belongs to him. Don't rule in the desert, then. There's no one there to argue with you. What a king you'll be there. This boy of mine is on the women's side. Yes, if you're a woman, I am. I'm on your side, father, you know that. You damned impertinent devil. Every word you say is against me, your own father. Well, I know you're wrong, I have to speak. How am I wrong? By maintaining my position on the authority of the state, is that wrong? When position and authority right rough short of the moral field. You're weak and uxorious and contemptible with no will of your own. Yet a woman's mouth beats. I'm not ashamed of what I'm saying. Every word you've said pleads for her. I plead for you. And for myself and for common humanity. Respect for the dead. You will never marry that woman, never. Not this side of the grave. If she dies, she won't die alone. There'll be two deaths, not one. Are you threatening me? How dare you threaten me? No, that's not a threat. I'm telling you, your plan was misbegotten from the beginning. Misbegotten? Dear God, if anything's misbegotten here, it's my son. You'll regret this, I promise you. If you were my father, I'd say you were demented. Don't father me. You're a woman's plaything, a tame laptop. Is anyone else allowed to speak? Must you have the last word in everything? Must all the rest of us be gagged? I must. And I will. And you, I promise you, will regret what you've spoken here today. I will not be sneered at or contradicted by anyone. 
Sons can be punished too. Bring her out, the condemned woman, the criminal. Let her die here and now in front of him, this passionate bridegroom of hers. You can watch the execution. That's one sight I shall never see. Nor from this moment. Father, will you ever see me again? Those that wish to stay and watch this disgusting spectacle of tyranny and injustice are welcome to it. I know, Graham. Your son has gone so desperate and in such a hurry. I am afraid for him. When young men are angry, anything is possible. Let him go. Let him do as he pleases. Let him rave himself senseless. It's all noise and nonsense. The two women are sentenced. It'll take more than that to reprieve them, I promise you. Both of them, son? You mean to put both of the sisters to death? No, you're right. I can take advice. The one who covered the body, not the other. And for the condemned one? What manner of death? Take her to some lonely place. A desert unfrequented by anyone. Find a cave and wall her up in it. Bury her alive! But with just enough food so that no guilt for her death will fall upon us, neither state nor city, she'll have plenty of time to honor the gods of the dead there, since they receive so many of her prayers. <laughs> they will release her one way or the other, and she will learn that worshipping the dead is not the business of the living. <laughs> flowers appear in a young girl's cheeks, the remorseless magic begins. And then, from the deepest valley to the highest peak, his traps are set. And no man's sins or virtues can keep him from the net. The mania is universal. But the gods themselves run mad. Men lose their wits, and no one is spared. When the madness strikes, no one is safe. The maturest of men will commit follies and crimes undreamed of in saner times. What else could provoke this strife between father and son, this family divided, and murderous anger between kin? There is fire in a woman's eye, incited by such consuming heat, a man's mind can burn. Aphrodite shares powers with Zeus! Her seat is at his 